praying scripture, Psalm 3. We will read the whole psalm to begin with. A psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? They are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lay down and sleep. I wake again, because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. The Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Verse 3 says, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. In verse 2, David had come to a point of waiting. He had told God about the situation and how he felt in dramatic language, with dramatic feeling. And then he paused. He paused in that place where he was desperate and desolate, despairing, and he waited. As he waited, his thoughts were directed to the one who hears the very cry of his heart. And verse 3 begins with, but. The word but gives a change in thought, in circumstance, and in expectation. It means one thing may be the case, and yet there is something else that can be said. But can bring hope, or but can bring despair. It means that that which has gone before has a change has an opportunity. There is something more which can be said. It is not just one way. But you, but you, Lord. David has told all about his situation. He has told all about the negativity, the despair, the lack of opportunity, the fear, and he ends with, but the difference in the situation is you. David has told God about what he sees and hears physically, what he knows physically to be the truth. And he says, and yet there is God. In your situation today, verse three brings you to, and yet there is God. Corinthians says, these three things remain, faith, which means persuasion, hope, which means expectancy, and love. God is love. David is saying, and yet, even in the midst of absolute despair and dire situations, I expect God. I am persuaded of God. I see the physical but I know the spiritual. I am aware that there is more to life than just this. The perishable tells me nothing can be done. The imperishable tells me of the impossible one. God can do the impossible in our physical situations and he will also always be what seems impossible physically because he is spiritual. When death comes, we see it as the end. God sees it as us simply moving rooms. He sees us as simply transitioning from the perishable into the imperishable, from something that will fail, get sick and end, to a body and a life and an existence and an experience that is everlasting, that won't get sick, that won't end. Death, where is your sting? Though it hurts us in the perishable, it leads us to the imperishable. So in your situation where all you feel and all you see and all you hear 
is turmoil and despair. Can you come now and say to God, but you, but I expect you, God. Write down again today the situations you're waiting in, the situations that seem impossible, the things that have not changed, whatever they are, whether they are intense or just sitting in the background of your life. Write them down, and over each one say, But you, Lord, but I expect you, Lord, but I know even in the midst of all the things I see and all the things I hear, even in my waiting, when in the perishable physical earth I have not seen you move, I expect you, Lord, I know you, Lord. I have more than the perishable, Lord. I have more than the physical, Lord. I don't need you just to work physically, Lord, because I can trust you spiritually, Lord, for something greater, bigger. Pause the recording if you need to. The next word is Lord. We have spoken of this before. It means master, sovereign, guide. In this situation where you only see negativity and you only hear the voice of despair, can you now say, Lord, be my guide, but you, Lord, are my guide, but you, Lord, are my master, but what you tell me to do, Lord, I will obey. Can you make him Lord of your life, even in the midst of a situation where it looks like he is doing nothing? Go over these situations again now and say, but I expect you, Master, but I will obey you, Lord, but I wait for you to guide me, Lord, but my eyes are on you, Lord. No, it may not look like he is doing anything, but by praying these prayers, you are bringing him in to your situation. You are reminding yourself of who is in you in the situation. Again, pause the recording if you need to. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. Are a shield. Not will be. Not have been. Not I'd like you to be. But you are a shield. When Mary was at the wedding in Canaan and the wine ran out, she looked at Jesus and said to the servant, whatever he says, do it. His response was, mother or woman, it is not my time. And she said, whatever he says, do it. She did not listen to Jesus saying, not now, woman. She said, I know he has the answer. I know if you listen, he's going to give it. I know. And she put Jesus in a situation where if he had not moved, he would have broken her trust in him. If he had not done what she had said he could do, he would not have shown himself to be who he is. She said, I'm not going to listen to the, it isn't the time, I can't, because you're God, because you can, because you love me. And she knew he would honour his love for his mother and do what only God can do. She forced him to do the first miracle. She propelled him into his ministry by saying, I expect you to work. But Lord, you are. Can you go over the situations and expect God to work? Don't tell him what you need him to be. Don't tell him what he used to be. Tell him what he is. Acknowledge him for who he is. But you, Lord, are. You are a shield around me. But you, Lord, are in the situation with me. A shield, a 
shield, a protective weapon of war. My friend, you are in a war. You are in a war. And if you allow yourself, all you will see is the physical battle rather than the spiritual one who gives victory. A shield that surrounds me. A shield that protects me. Paul said, put on your spiritual armour. Take up the shield of faith. Faith means persuasion. The Greek word for faith is persuasion. To be persuaded of what God has told you. When the fiery darts of the enemy comes, the accusations of what won't happen, of who you are, of what you can't do, of where you're going to go, it is the shield of the persuasion of what God has said that will surround your mind, your heart, and keep you expecting him in the situation. Keep you listening to that voice that will guide you out of the situation. If you lose that, you lose direction and you will lose yourself in that situation. You will lose what you are meant to hold on to and what you are meant to do. And the situation will win over you instead of you being more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You may never come out the other side if you don't listen to the guidance and instruction of the one who has made the way. He will give you the map. He will give you the direction. If you will acknowledge him today, who he is, what he is, where he is, in you, with you, he is God omnipotent, eternal, majestic, always loving, all-knowing and all-powerful. And that persuasion, that conviction, deep, deep assurance and knowing, that is your butt in the situation. The perishable says there is no way but you, Lord, make a way. The perishable says there is no hope, but in you, Lord, there is such great hope. And it is not just a hope that you will work this situation out. It is a hope that even if this situation never changes, you, Lord, are my hope. You give me the imperishable. You give me that which will not die, which will not break. You give me that which will never cause despair. I am here only for a season, but with you for eternity. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. Go over your situations now again. Go over the people who have troubled you, those you are worried about, and proclaim over each one. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. But you, Lord, know the whole situation. But you, Lord, I expect you to work. But you, Lord, give me the peace. You are now doing it. Pause the recording if you need to. Around me? Around who? Around you. Just you, no one else. You. Take your eyes off other people for a second and put them on you. It's you who needs the strength in this situation. Yes, you might want other people to know it too, but take responsibility for what God has given you responsibility for, and he has given you responsibility for you. You can't make faith in anyone else. You can, however, Live out your life with your persuasion of God, walking with him and allow him to do what he wishes to do around you, all ways round. In the midst of a situation where David had so many enemies coming against him, he knew he was surrounded by the shield of God, surrounded, no worries. I'm protected.
from every single side. Can you go over the situations again and thank God that you have him in the situation, that he is literally inside you in that situation and can give you what you need today for this situation? Brother or sister, believe me, he can. He can, but you must let him. You must rely on him. You must expect him to do it. Expect him. No more today feeling like he can't and you have nothing to offer. You have someone to go to. Can you pray now and ask him to forgive you and repent of the worries that you worried about? Can you say, I know you surround me. I know you're around me. I am in you and you are in me. He is your refuge surrounding you and yet he is also inside of you. Take the encouragement today. Pause the recording if you need to and repent of all of your worries. My glory. My glory. Glory is marvelling in something that is wonderful. It's something that lays heavy upon us. It doesn't mean it's a burden. It means it's a constant concern. It's what we constantly think about. It's what we constantly surround ourselves, smother ourselves in. It's what we constantly dwell on. It's what we find absolute enjoyment in. And Paul and David, and David in this situation, in the midst of being surrounded in the physical world by hatred and enemies and envy and fighting, in the midst of only hearing complete negativity, says, But you, Lord, you're my glory. Why? Because he knew, he was persuaded of God on the inside. And he was persuaded that that God who was on the inside protected him on the outside. That he could go through these situations even whilst having to wait for God to work in the physical. Knowing his God, his God was more important, was bigger, was deeper, was wider than everything else. He found enjoyment, fulfillment, contentment, and joy in God. The one who lifts my head high. Physical, despairing situations will drag you down. You will feel so low, so scared, so anxious, so frightened, so afraid. But God, God can lift your head high, not after the battle is won, but during every battle that's begun. Throughout every bad day and every good day, he will lift your head high because he is the one the only one who is and always will be. God said, my name is I am that I am. That is the verb to be. He says, I be what I be. I just am. I exist. And in all of your despair and in all of your struggles and in all of your good days and your bad days, he is. He is. And he is for you. He glories in you. He is so marvellous and so magnificent. He protects you. When you see and hear nothing but war and hatred and famine and disaster and despondency and despair. 
can you say but you lord but you protect me you're my refuge i know you're doing it it just is you are in me you are around me you are heavy on my heart in other words you are always there in my heart you're magnificent you're glorious you are my glory you are the one who lifts my head high when they try to bow me down you lift me up from the inside because of my relationship with you because you are wonderful because you are there because you are lord master i listen for you and I will obey you. Pause the recording now and talk to Jesus. Talk to your God. Talk to your rock. Talk to your saviour. Talk to the one who is here. The imperishable. Take your eyes off the perishable. It is happening. But you, Lord, you are always happening too. Forever. This is but for a season. But God is forever let us pray heavenly father i thank you that you are forever i thank you that you are imperishable i thank you that you are eternal i thank you that you are mine and in all of these situations and all of these events and every day of my life and every day of eternity, you are in me, for me, protecting me and surrounding me. I trust in you. Oh God, you are my glory. Be heavy on my heart. Be always on my heart. Be always on my mind. Let me fall in love with you. And in every situation, I thank you that that love, that love, that joy, that relationship and that experience that we have together, oh, I thank you that it will lift up my head and I will see the imperishable in the midst of the perishable. And it's the imperishable that will live forever. I give you this earthly situation for what it is, Lord. So simple, so easy for you. Amen. My prayer for you, that is as you walk with the God of the impossible, you will know him fuller and fuller and fuller inside your spirit. That the Holy Spirit will so dwell in you. And that every perishable situation, even the most awful perishable situations, will not make you shake, nor make you move. But you will find the glory of God in them. That you will worship him and have a spirit of praise instead of a garment of heaviness. My prayer for you is that you will know him in all things. And that he will be in you in all things. May you find the joy of the Lord in every situation. God bless.